Today I'm going to show you how to do a very basic fluid simulation in Blender 2.7. I'm going to start off by getting you to do your first very basic simulation. I'm going to add in some other objects and effects within it. And then I'm going to explain all the different settings that you can use within your simulation. Um, so you just start off with your default setup. You're going to select your default cube. You're going to want to scale it up by hitting S5 and Enter. You press Z to go into wireframe mode so that you can see. And you're going to need to add a fluid object by hitting Shift A and clicking on UV Sphere. You want to move it up by hitting G Z. You want to move it up three units inside the sphere or inside the cube. What's really important is that you keep all of your fluid objects and all of your interaction objects inside the cube because your fluid can never leave the cube. Even once you start simulating, it won't go outside of your cube, so you need to make sure it's all inside. Also, it can't be a rectangle. It can't be any complex shapes, basically. Just, just cubes. You're going to go over to your Physics tab, which is all the way on the right. Click on Fluid, Type, Domain. Then you're going to select your original sphere. Click on Fluid, Type, Fluid. And then click on your domain object again and hit fake. And here you'll see the fluid fall all the way down to the bottom and splash around to the sides where you can see the domain limits. So once you have your very simple fluids uh, set up, you might decide that instead of having it be a ball of fluid that falls at the bottom, you want it to be a constant flow, in which case you'd select your sphere, change fluid to inflow. Uh, you're going to need an inflow velocity, otherwise it'll just constantly drip fluid. So I'm going to set Z to negative 1 and X to 1, which means that it'll shoot diagonally and downward. You can select your domain again and hit bake, and you can see it now firing out to the bottom of the domain. And if I let it go through the entire time, it will fill up the cube. So... If I want it to interact with an object, I need to hit Shift A and add in that object. I'm going to put this where it can actually collide with the cube. But if I were to just to rebake this right now, it wouldn't do anything because I need to select my cube, click on Fluid, and change the type to Obstacle. Now when I bake this, you'll see it will come out and it will splash off the top of the cube because it's now reading it as an object that it can interact with. If I want it to not splash off of it, but I want this cube to delete anything that touches it, uh, I can change it to outflow. I can change it to particle, which will make it generate fluid particles, which I'll explain later. The control is a an interesting type of way of, of playing with the fluid, but we're not going to get into that because it's kind of strange and takes a little bit. I'll include a link in the description that will describe it. Now I'm going to get into the settings that you have available to you in the Fluid Simulator. If you select your domain, you can see resolution here. You have your final resolution and your preview resolution. Your final is what will show up in your final render. Your preview is what will show up in your viewport. If you want to see your final, uh, your final render in your viewport, you click on the viewport display and you select final. So you can see it's slightly higher resolution because it's at 65 instead of 45. But you got to be careful with that because when you get to higher resolutions, you have a lot of polygons to deal with and it can crash Blender. Now we're going to move on to the time settings here. You get start, end, and speed. You start and end are basically the number of seconds that your fluid simulation takes place over. So it sets 0 seconds at frame 1 and 4 seconds at frame 250. If you want to set your timing up correctly, you need to take your total frames, divide it by your frame rate, and that will give you a final number which will go into your end here. Your speed will not affect your start and end time, but it will affect the way that your fluid interacts with the scene that you set up. Real world size will affect the scale that your, um, your domain reads the area that it's covering at. Uh, you might want to play with that once you get your your timing set up correctly so that it, your, your, the scale of your scene feels proper. Your viscosity is essentially the thickness of your fluid. You can find settings for that online that will give you interesting effects like handle wax. You've got your fluid boundary, which is how your fluid will interact with the limits of your domain and your 
surface smoothing and subdivisions, we'll take your final bake, your fluid bake, and it will subdivide it and smooth it, which will make it to look a little bit nicer. And it's basically a way of faking resolution. Once you get to a resolution of about 200, 150 to 200, you start getting passable, but if you're at that level and you add subdivisions to it, it'll make it look really nice. Fluid particles add little particles coming out of your fluid simulation at um, at different times based on vector speeds and things like that but really what it's what it's good for is if you have a very complex looking simulation so it's it's supposed to be very large scale having these small splashes these particles coming out of it will really make it feel a lot more real and a lot more complete so those are really just the that's that's how you use the fluid simulator those are all the things that you really need to know i'm going to include links that further describe some of the more complicated parts of the uh the settings and the objects but for the most part that's really everything you need to know and it's just about how you combine that knowledge if you want to know anything else about it please ask if you want to know anything about the program in general please ask i will try to make a tutorial covering any of your questions thank you for watching